Matt, we are two minutes out from the event. Just looking for thumbs up. Copy, thumbs up. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event. CBS News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is CBS News. How do you hear us? Sending UK asylum seekers to Rwanda within the next UK CBS News, this is Matt. Have it loud and clear. Rwanda bill. The legislation will send some UK... Copy that. Stand by. ...to have their claims processed there. It's part of the UK government's strategy to combat the flow of migrants arriving on small boats. The House of Lords gave their approval last night after previously refusing to pass.
In two weeks, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is scheduled to launch its first piloted test flight. It will bring two veteran NASA astronauts to the International Space Station a couple of years after a successful uncrewed test mission. And who better to talk then to someone than someone who's actually in the International Space Station right now? We're so very happy and lucky to be joined by astronaut Matt Dominic, who is with us, but actually some 200 plus miles uh, above the Earth's uh, atmosphere <laughs> in the International Space Station. I don't even know how many miles yeah, it is. No, that sounded good to me. It sounded good, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, before we even get to some other questions, uh, Matt, how far up are you? We're 250 miles above the Earth, but I think what's more interesting to me is that we're going 17,500 miles an hour. I like speed, and this is the place to get it. Yeah, wow. it's, it sounds like it. Um, so I want to ask you about, you know, the private industry getting involved in the space game, but I'm just going to be self-indulgent right now, Do it. right? So I had the pleasure of seeing the total eclipse in real life for the first time in my life in 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 the, the path of totality. The path of totality. How can you forget it? And I was blown away. And when I watch the videos of myself, I'm just saying, oh, my God, over and over <laughs> and over again. But you were actually up there during the total eclipse. What does it look like from your vantage point? Uh, you know, so walking into an event like that where you know it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, uh, a friend of mine a long time ago gave me some advice and just said to take mental pictures. So we, we floated into this event instead of walking into this event and said, okay, I want to remember this for a long time. And so I remember, the, I remember taking mental pictures of the birth of my children and remembering that moment. I can take myself back there. I remember, you know, certain events for my time in the Navy and uh, life experiences. But to me, we walked into this and the whole crew walked into that knowing, hey, this is really cool. In fact, my crew mate, Dr. Barrett, uh, was so excited. He's been talking about this eclipse for a year and a half. And just to hear him, hear his reactions, his reaction to seeing this giant black just circle take over the Earth. And we were super lucky that the space station flew right over the top. And so we wedged four of us into a room. We call the cupola. It has seven windows. It looks down at the Earth. And it's just an inspiring place. But we all four of us were able to wedge in there and see the solar eclipse and just see it. Just Our space station came right over the top at, at totality. It was incredible. Wow. So, Commander, you've, Mamory wanted to ask you about uh, the, the, the privatization of these uh, spacecraft that are now going into space. Um, what's your thought on that? Uh, having uh, yourself come from the military, you were a test pilot. I think it's sort of interesting that uh, up until recent years, a lot of our astronauts have been uh, test pilots. Um, mm -hmm. There have been some scientists and engineers, mm -hmm. but but primarily uh, we've drawn some of the personnel from the military ranks into NASA, and the aircraft have been built by NASA. Now we're seeing other companies building these spacecraft. What's your thought on that? Oh, so, so many thoughts on this one, of course. But if you just look at the history of governments and what governments do, and governments serve so many purposes, but NASA is part of the government, and NASA's job is to move boundaries forward for civilization. And you've seen in the history of governments, you know, governments funded exploration, and then people followed. So what we're doing here at NASA and what the government does in general is we move the boundaries forward, and then the private sector moves in behind us and takes up places. The government takes the risk that the civilian sector, the, the private sector, would never take or couldn't afford. And so now we're moving mm -hmm. into low Earth orbit. Private, private companies are following, and the follow-on is the moon. So we're going to the moon. NASA's going to move that and make that a permanent stay on the moon. Uh, and, and then I think we'll see the private sector follow. This has been a trend for hundreds of years. Really quickly, were you able to bring your dad's watch with you? I did bring my dad's watch. In fact, today's his birthday, so I'll be wearing it today, later, and make it give him a phone call. I love it. Can you just tell, because I heard this story already, but can you yeah. tell people like the background story background. of that watch, why it was so important for that to be one of the few personal items you could bring? Uh, so many reasons, but I just have really deep, fond memories of, as a child. We, we do these family... Um, family road trips, right? The classic family road trip across America. And you'd have to pass your time. And this is before the era of the smartphone where you had suddenly, you know, the attention economy was so big. And so you just had to find ways to pass your time. And I sat there with this mechanical watch that had a chronograph. And you could start and stop it at just the right moment. And I'd line up the window with the mile marker. 
and figure out exactly you know how long it was going to take to get to the next city, the next road stop, and constantly give time, fuel, speed updates to my dad, and just really fond memories <laughs> of doing that, and then using that skill later in the Navy and now it's and now it's space. Right. You were doing countdowns as a kid. I love that. Speaking <laughs> of, just real quickly before you go, Commander, I, I, I always ask this of every fellow ROTC graduate. Uh, <laughs> when you joined uh, Navy ROTC, did you ever imagine in your life that you would become an astronaut and, and travel the space? Or was that always your intention? I mean, I, I, sure. I mean, so many people dream and think about it. I, I knew it was always something in the back of my mind. Did I actually think it was going to become real? I, I'm not sure. I think so. Maybe I just it was something to strive for, and, and here we are today. But definitely thought about that at Navy ROTC at the University of San Diego. Um, incredible story. Yeah, I, we could ask you a bunch of other questions, but I, I, I gather you're probably pretty busy up there. <laughs> so, uh, astronaut Matt Dominic, thank you so much for taking some time out. Having a blast. Thanks so much for calling us up today and having an interview with y'all. Station is the Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications. Station copies.